Hi, I'm Jenny Robertson, founder of the On Purpose Woman Global Community and founder and publisher of On Purpose Woman Magazine. I'm here to share the speaker portion of our Connections Over Coffee gathering of the On Purpose Woman Global Community. Vicki Eyeball is speaking on Should Goals Versus Gift Goals, How to Set Goals That Inspire You to Take Action. Vicki is a certified, a certified coach and the founder of Know You to Grow You Business Consulting and Coaching, where she works with women entrepreneurs to shift from being stuck and frustrated to feeling like a CEO, a confident entrepreneurial owner. She doesn't believe in cookie cutter approaches. She instead helps each client uncover how they work best so they can get more done with less stress and more flow. You can find out more about Vicki at her website, knowyoutogrowyou.com, and it's also in the text of this video. Welcome, Vicki. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Jenny, and thank you to the On Purpose Women Global Networking Community. So if you're watching this on replay or on Facebook, like join in next time, like be in the room. It's really powerful. So we're going to talk about should goals versus gift goals today. And uh, Oh, Lordy, my share screen likes to freeze. So I'm hoping that you can see this. Okay, I think we're good now. Sometimes when you shift things, like things like to freeze. So today we're going to talk about should goals versus gift goals. And uh, I'm a former instructional designer. So yes, I like slides. I like handouts. It's just who I am. And the benefit is those of you who are visual learners and tactile learners who like to write things, you're going to have access to all of this. So. Let's talk about what the difference is. But before I get to a should goal, let's talk about the goal that you're probably most familiar with, which is the SMART goal. It's that specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time-bound goal. And I'm not going to criticize SMART goals today. You are allowed to have SMART goals. What I am going to introduce you to is the idea that sometimes your SMART goals are should goals. And we can make them better by transferring them in through a process into gift goals. So I'm going to explain what those two things are. And then I'm going to take you through a process to convert your should goal into a gift goal. So a should goal feels about like this. It feels like pushing the boulder up the hill. There's a lot of effort. There's a lot of energy. There's a lot of I don't want to. This is hard don't make me do it. And my guess is if you have some should goals, they probably have been on your list for a while and you may not have ever gotten them done. And yet they, they keep showing up every single year, every time you set goals. Anybody have some of those? It's like, I, I, I do. And I, I'm letting them go and I'm transferring them into gift goals. So let me give you a couple examples of things that might be should goals for you lose 10 pounds by August 31st. Anybody relate to the, like the weight loss goal? Double my revenue by December 31st. Anybody relate to like revenue goals for their business? And these aren't necessarily bad goals. However, sometimes they're not motivating. They feel like, oh, I got to do this. Like, does anybody sit around going, oh, goody, I'm going to work on losing 10 pounds. We just we don't. It's it's a should. And sometimes what happens with should goals is it's really somebody else's goal that they kind of assign to you and you've taken on, but you don't really want to do it. And that might be, well, everybody tells me I need to start a blog or everybody tells me I need to be on threads now. And so I'm going to be on threads, but maybe you don't really want to. And so it's just not motivating, it's not inspiring, and it requires you to have to grind it out. So who's ready to like, let that go? I mean, I'm more than ready. Like, I don't have, to, I don't have the energy anymore to grind. I want things to flow. And that's the beauty of a gift. How would you like your goal to feel like you're getting a present? Like you're getting a gift. Like something good is coming to you. It's motivating. It's inspiring. It's in flow. It's easy. It becomes easier because it's usually tied to something that you truly want and that is aligned to who you are. And so it's very internally motivated instead of externally motivated. 
So I'm going to take those two goals that we looked at before and give you an example of a gift goal before we move through the process of how you can transfer your should goals into gift goals or just create a new goal altogether. So instead of losing 10 pounds, it's move and nourish my body daily so that I have energy to enjoy weekend activities with my family. Far more inspiring, and that's a gift to me because I get to enjoy time with my family. I get to have energy and I get to choose how I'm moving and nourishing my body. It's still time bound. I'm doing it daily and I get to celebrate progress every single day. A should goal, often you don't get to celebrate till you get to the end. A gift goal builds into it constant celebration of achievement, which then motivates you to continue to move forward. Instead of the doubling the income, it's I'm growing my business in a way that is fun, fulfilling, and supportive of my life goals. That still implies that I'm increasing my income because though that income is supporting the things I want most. And that might be different for everybody. For me, it's to create a family compound that I can create a house and a studio for my son who's a musician. That's more inspiring than just achieving the number. The number leads to what is it I want most in my life. And that number allows me to now support a dream I have. That's the beauty of a gift goal is it feels like you're giving yourself something that you really, truly want. So who wants to create some gift goals? So I always love to have a handout. And so I have created one for this. You can go get it. Um, I'm also going to share this at the end. So you can just go ahead and just focus on asking the questions to yourself and going through the process and know that you can go get this later. And you will have everything that we're going to talk about today contained in a two-page handout that makes it super easy for you to repeat this over and over and over again. So let's start the process. So the first thing is to look at what's that current goal? What's that current should? And I really recommend you, you pick a goal that's either been on your list for a while or that's something that you're kind of like, I really, that, yeah, I don't know if I like this goal or not. So pick kind of the, the sticky one that you're like, oh, this feels like a should. It just feels like it might be a should. And so I'm going to give an example that is kind of, it's a made up and yet it kind of flows with one of my clients. And that is, Decluttering the office. Lots of people are like, oh my gosh, I need to declutter my messy office. I need to straighten it up. I need to get more organized. That's kind of a should goal. So does everybody have a goal that they have in mind that they're going to work on? Okay, I'm seeing, I'm seeing yeses from the faces I can see here. The first question to ask yourself is, is this something I really want to do? Because sometimes goals are kind of assigned to you and you're like, I don't want to do this. Now, occasionally it is a goal you have to do. Like you have to, this came up in several discussions I've had in the past year. You have to do your taxes. We don't have to. But if you don't, there are consequences to not doing your taxes. So there are certain things you kind of have to do, but we're still going to work with that. But is this goal something you really want to do? And if it is, why? And if not, why not? So when it came to the decluttering of the office, it was yes, because the person was sick of the mess they were surrounded by and the fact that they couldn't find anything. They couldn't find what they needed when they needed it. So it was wasting time and energy and frustration, frustrating them. The next question you want to ask then is, what is it that I really want? Like, what's the underlying thing going on here? So I kind of answered that in the previous example, that what that person really wanted was to be able to find what she needed when she needed it so she wasn't wasting time. But then when she went deeper, what she really wanted was an office where she could walk in, sit down, get to work, feel good and not be distracted by the things around her. 
That's what she really wanted. Those were like the two things she really wanted. So what is it you really want and why do you want it? And I'm going with this quickly because I really want you to not overthink it because the answers are in here. They're inside of you. When you start overthinking it, that's when you stay stuck in the land of should. We want to get to the land of gift. What is it you really want? And you get to want what you want without anybody telling you that that's okay or not okay. You get to want what you want just because you want it. So then we get to the next question here. So what will achieving that goal or having that thing give you that you don't have now? And you'll notice a lot of these questions are kind of asking the same thing from different angles. So what the decluttered office might give that person is the ability to just feel proud of their space so that when they go on camera on Zoom, they're not putting up a fake background they're not staying off camera, that they're happy to show off their space, that if somebody comes over, they're not like, oh, sorry, it's all messy. But more importantly, what it gives them is the ability to sit down, to get in flow, to do the work. Before we started today, we, we had a side conversation about how having a space that's kind of like things are put away and feel clean and organized just allows the work to flow and to get right into flow right away. So that's what that would give that person, the ability to find everything they want, to get into flow, to feel proud of their space. So what does your desire in achieving that goal really give you? And then we wanna get into the feeling. We wanna really get into the heart. Like how are you gonna feel? And not necessarily when you accomplish that should goal, but when you get what you want, when you get the results you most desire, how is that going to feel? I'm sure that the person who's walking into their office that is clean and organized and they're able to find stuff is going to actually want to spend time in their office. They're going to feel like, wow, this is my sanctuary. This is where I do my creative work. This is where I get amazing stuff accomplished instead of feeling it being chaotic energy. So they're just going to feel this sense of peace and calm when they walk into that space. So how will it feel when you accomplish what it is you want? It is in the taking of all this little pieces of information that then go into building that goal that feels like a gift. Because you've started to pull out, here's how I want to feel. Here's what I really want. Here's why I want it. Here's what makes this meaningful for me. A lot of times should goals really aren't meaningful for you. They're just a random thing that you're trying to achieve. Our goal in creating the gift is to have this mean something to you, for you to care about it, for it to have intrinsic aligned value for you, because that's going to be more motivating. So let's go back to our examples, because Sometimes creating that gift goal, it helps if you see some examples. And if you're really stuck, guess what? You can have a 30-minute session with me and we'll build out your gift goal. That is my gift to you because I am tired of seeing people try and accomplish should goals. We need to get out of shouldville and we need to start treating our progress as a gift. So the double my income by December 31st. The gift becomes growing my business in a way that is fun, is fulfilling, and supportive of my life goals. So much more motivating intrinsically to tie it to how do I want to feel? What is it I really want this to accomplish? And to not tie it to a number. There can be a number behind this, but to have the overall goal. So if you woke up in the morning and you saw those two goals, which one's really motivating you to take action? Only you can answer that. And you are welcome to keep the goal on the left if you want. I'm, you have permission to do it however you want. I'm just inviting you if that feels hard and heavy to switch to the goal on the right. Um, if we look at lose 10 pounds by August 31st, and that becomes fuel and move my body so I feel good and have sustained energy to do the things I want. 
How do I want to feel? What is it I really want to accomplish? I really want to have sustained energy. If I could move my body, feel good, and have sustained energy, the number on the scale would not even matter because I'm doing what I want to do. I feel good doing it. And I get to celebrate every day that I took action to fuel my body and to move my body. So I am giving myself a gift every day just by taking action because I'm moving forward with what it is I want more. So let's look at a couple others. Declutter my messy office by August 31st. That one, which we kind of worked through together today, could become keep my office organized enough because some of us, let's face it, you organize it once and you're organizing it every single month. It's a new goal every single month because you're just, you're not as organized as some people. So it becomes keep my office organized enough to allow me to find what I need to support and to have support and focus daily. Post on social media three times each week. This came up when we talked about this, I think last month is one of a quick little thing that we did in On Purpose Women. And it really morphed into something that was more about sharing and connecting as opposed to the posting. And so it became share and connect with others. And I apologize for the typos. My brain and my hands don't always move together, but share and connect with others daily in a way that is fun and enjoyable. That connection doesn't have to help it happen on social media. It could happen in a networking group, just like On Purpose Women. It could happen in a conversation that you have with somebody on a phone call. So if that person is like, you know what? I don't even like social media and I don't wanna be on social media. I'm gonna find other ways to connect and share. Instead, that feels more like a gift because I'm a connector and I love connecting with people. So you get to decide what feels like a gift to you? What do you do once you have that gift goal? So this is kind of some bonus content. The first thing you can do is to look at what resources do you already have? You probably already know enough people, you have bought enough courses, you have bought enough books, that if you really think about what you already have access to, you already have what you need to take those first next actions and to get help. The other thing that can really help you move forward is to see how can you achieve success by default, meaning set up habits that just keep you moving forward all the time. A lot of the goals, if you tie it to an action you can take and celebrate every time you take that action, it can actually keep you moving forward towards what you want without a lot of resistance or friction. And accountability. Now, I am not talking about the kind of accountability where somebody's like the drill sergeant, like yelling at you, blowing the whistle, like you didn't do what you said you were going to do. You're a failure. Like that is not helpful. That is not loving. That is not supportive. This is the kind of accountability where the person is cheering you on every time you're taking actions forward. And when you're not taking actions forward, they're sitting down with you and going, okay, let's talk about what's going on. What's getting in the way? And they're helping you clear the blocks instead of trying to shame you into action. Do not sign up for accountability that puts you into a shameful situation where they're shaming you for not getting, that, getting the things done. Find somebody who's going to support you and help you get past the block and move forward or help you realign the goal and say, okay, what's not working here? What can we adjust that makes this? something that is more aligned and motivating for you to achieve. So who has started to shift one of those should goals into something that feels more like a gift today? You have some ideas that you're starting to percolate with. Yeah. And Mary Jane, I'm gonna, we're, when we go back to the big room, I'll make sure we have a, have a discussion in there. So I, I see your hand. And so I want to invite those of you who are watching through Facebook or you're watching the replay, go ahead, grab the handout, work through this on the second page of the handout. If you're like, I'm stuck, Vicki, I really like, I, I'm not getting how to do this. And I really, this is an important goal for me to achieve. 
there's a link for you to set up a call with me, totally complimentary to work through this process. Because sometimes just having somebody talk it through with you and highlight what they're hearing helps you achieve your gift goal so much easier and to start making progress on it. So I encourage you, anytime you have a goal that feels heavy, like a should, like a need to instead of a want to, to walk through this process to see how you can find the gift in it for you that makes it something that you're just magnetically pulled towards wanting to achieve instead of feeling like you're pushing that boulder up the hill. So thank you so much. We are going to close out the Facebook time here with this presentation and I'm gonna see the rest of the group back in the networking. And if you're not there, like be there next time. This group is too good to not spend time meeting the other women who show up in the live networking group. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Vicki. Once you stop sharing your screen, we'll come back together here. And I just want to uh, thank you, Vicki. Thank you, Vicki. And um, ask everybody who's watching this with us here in Zoom to unmute yourself so Vicki can hear our applause and our yays for that wonderful presentation. So, yay. Oh, <laughs> um, thank you, Vicki. Awesome. You know, thank you. you. Yes. Thank you, Vicki. You did this a little, you touched on this at a five minute featured member presentation. And I said, I want to know more about that. So, so concise, so great graphics. I uh, just love your presentation so much. And I got a lot going on in my head right now. So I want to thank anyone else who's watching this live or the replay on our YouTube channel. If you'd like to join us for one of our nine free gatherings a month, or in on Zoom, or in in-person in Columbia, Maryland, Tallahassee, Florida, or Richmond, Virginia. Comment below, and I'll tell you how to do that. You can also go to opwgc.com and find out all about our community. That link, as well as the link to Vicki's website, is also in the text of this video. So thanks for watching. <laughs>